Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about how whenever there is an elastic collision, you are allowed to do a very special shortcut um, that'll give you two simple equations that you can use as a system of equations to solve for some unknown variable. Um, now, for elastic collisions, basically what an elastic collision means is two things. It means that momentum is conserved, so we'll say the momentum at the beginning equals the momentum at the end, and kinetic energy is conserved. Now, Another way of saying that the momentum is conserved between, you know, two objects that are being uh, hit is by calling one of those objects A and the other B. So let's draw two objects going towards each other. Here's A, here's B. They're moving towards each other. Um, is to say that the change in momentum of A is equal to the opposite change in momentum of B and consequently that the change in kinetic energy of A is equal to the opposite change in kinetic energy, so negative, of object B. Um, now let's let's start by looking at the, the change of momentum. So I can write this change of momentum of object A as the mass of A times the change in velocity of A. And then this can be the mass, negative mass of, well, you know, opposite of the mass of B times the change in velocity of B. And I'm going to actually go ahead and write that as VA minus VA naught. And then similarly on this right side, I'm going to get VB minus VB naught. All right, now we're going to set this aside and call it equation 1. And we'll come back to it later. Now let's look at the kinetic energies. So if I look at the increase of kinetic energy in A it being equal to the you know decrease in kinetic energy of B, or vice versa, that kind of a thing, um, then what I get is half of the uh, mass times velocity of object A in the end minus m a v a naught squared. So that's the change of kinetic energy of A. Um, and then for this one, I'm going to get negative one-half mb v b squared minus one-half mb v b naught squared. Uh, and when I factor this in, you know, or I distribute it, then basically what's going to happen is that this is going to become negative and that will become positive. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the one-halves because there's a one-half in every term, so I don't need it. And then I'm going to factor out the mass on both sides so that on the left I get the mass of thing A times VA squared minus VA naught squared equals the, uh, the mass of thing B times, and I'm actually going to take these and reverse them so that I get VB naught squared minus VB squared. Okay, great. Um, and because these are equations that have the differences of squares, I can actually do one more step. I can go ahead and write this as VA minus VA naught equals VA plus VA naught. Because if I combine these two terms, I'm going to get that difference of their squares. The same happens on the right. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to have to write this kind of small. Only it's a little uh, flipped. I'm going to get VB naught minus VB times VB naught plus VB. Okay, good. We're going to call this thing equation 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take these two equations and divide one by the other. I'm going to take equation 2 and divide it by equation 1. So that what I get is MA times VA minus VA naught times VA plus VA naught equals this long equation that I should have copied and pasted, but I'm not because you need time to write it. Okay, we're going to divide the left side and the right side by the left side and the right side of the other equation. So MA times VA minus VA naught. And then this is going to be negative M, sorry, negative mb times vb minus vb naught. Um, now I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm actually going to factor this negative back in so that what I get here is mb times vb naught minus vb. And maybe now you see all the simplifications that we can do. 
I can get rid of the massive thing A, the massive thing B, and these terms, these entire terms, cancel out. And what I'm left with is this equality. The velocity of object A in the beginning and the end will add up to the velocity of object B in the beginning and the end. This becomes your second equation that you can use along with the conservation of momentum, or poop, to solve systems of equation problems um, where you need to have a second equation in order to solve something. Now let's try an example problem using the elastic shortcut. A 1.5 kilogram toy truck traveling at 2.5 meters per second forward collides elastically with a 1 kilogram toy car that is moving towards the toy truck. After the collision, the truck comes to a stop. Find the velocity of the toy car before and after the collision. Let's draw this situation. Okay, hopefully this drawing helps you see that the two objects are moving towards each other in the beginning. They collide, the truck comes to a stop, and there's some velocity of the car afterwards that we don't know. Now, I chose to do V1 and V2 just because it's a little easier for me to keep track of variables. Of course, you could use VA and VB. Um, we're going to have to rewrite our elastic shortcut equation with 1 and 2, so just bear with me. Hopefully, that's not too hard. But anyway, this problem starts off with conservation of momentum. P0 equals P. And I would look that at the beginning, both cars have momentum, so M1 V1 naught plus M2 V2 naught. But at the end, only the car would have momentum because the truck has come to a stop. So I would write M2, V2. Okay, so I could plug in numbers and try and solve for the initial and final velocity of the car, but because my one equation has both those unknown variables in it, I'm not going to be able to get an answer. This means that I need to look to my elastic shortcut as a second equation so that I can somehow try and eliminate either V2 naught or V2. So to do that, I'm going to take a look at kinetic energy and on the AP test, you have to state that you know the kinetic energy in the beginning is equal to the kinetic energy at the end. You could say elastic, so kinetic energy is conserved, or you can write k naught equals k. This is super important. You'll get a whole point for indicating that you know kinetic energy is conserved. You don't, however, have to go through the crazy process that we just did for the shortcut to get any credit on a free response question. You can kind of just get away with writing something like therefore, that's what those three dots mean, v1 naught plus v1 equals v2 naught plus v2, right? which is basically what we just came up with, but I'm using 1 and 2 instead of a and b. You could use a and b if that makes you feel better about yourself. Uh, anyway, now I've got a second equation that has v2 and v2 naught in it, so hopefully I can use it to eliminate one of them in my original momentum equations. Let's start by getting rid of v1, because we know that that is 0. The truck comes to a stop. So this really can be written v1 naught equals v2 naught. Um, and then let's rearrange this equation so that we can eliminate either v2 naught or v2. I'm just going to subtract v2 naught. And then by plugging this in to v2, which would be m2 times v1 naught minus v2 naught. By plugging that in, I'm, I've eliminated v2. It's gone. It's no longer in my equation. Instead, I have m1 v1 naught plus m2 v2 naught equals m2 times that whole thing. OK, now what I have to do to solve uh, for the initial velocity of the, ca the car is I have to get v2 naught by itself, which means I have to redistribute this mass. So on the left side, I'll get m2 v1 naught minus m2 v2 naught. And then I'm going to need to get the v2 knots on the same side. So probably the easiest way to do that is to add m2 v2 knot to both sides, so that I would get um, 2 m2 v2 knot on the left, and then subtract an m1 v1 knot, so that I would get, sorry, that should be an m, m2 v1 knot minus m1 v1 knot. Take a second to make sure you know how I was able to get the equation there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 2m2. And if I wanted to, I could factor out 
v1 naught so that I get m2 minus m1 times v1 naught. You don't have to do that to get a numerical answer, but it's helpful to get into the, the habit of doing that. Okay, so now I can plug in and get a velocity. Uh, the mass of the car is 1, so 1 kilogram minus the mass of the truck is 1.5. That should tell me that I'm going to have a, um, sorry, a negative velocity for the car in the beginning, which makes sense because it's traveling towards the truck. Um, so 1 minus 1.5 times 2.5 meters per second over 2 times the mass of the toy car is, yeah, sorry, 1. I forgot. All right, this is going to give me a velocity of negative 0.625 meters per second. Okay, now I can find the, sorry, that's V2. Now. now I can find V2 pretty easily. I know that it's just going to be 2.5 meters per second minus negative 0.625, the velocity that we just found, which will give me three, positive 3, 0.125 meters per second. So we have successfully found the velocity of the toy car both before and after the collision. All right, now let's do a problem that the AP test loves to throw at you. A box of mass M moves right with a velocity of VI, recognize it, when it collides elastically with a box of mass capital M at rest. What is the velocity of the M box after the collision? Give me a second to draw this situation. Okay, so here we have both objects drawn, and I'm going to call the little m block thing 1 and the big m block thing 2, just so it's easier for me to keep track of their final velocities after the collision. Um, but basically, I would start this problem with p not equals p, and say that the little m times vi is the only momentum in the beginning because the capital M block isn't moving, and then at the end, you would have little m times, I'm going to call this v1f, plus capital M times V2F. Now, I can't solve anything with this equation because I don't know either of those final velocities. So that's two unknown variables in my single equation. That's the clue that I should now look at the elastic nature of this collision and write K naught equals K, or rather KI equals KF, since the problem is using I. And for some reason, the AP test likes to mix and match when they use I and F or not and not not. I know that was a very confusing sentence. But anyway, you don't actually have to go through the process of writing out how you come to your equation for the velocities. Instead, you get your free point for indicating that you know the kinetic energy is conserved and move on to the shortcut. You can write, therefore, that's what those three dots mean, V I, uh, well, I can write it like this, V1 I plus V1F equals V2I plus V2F. Of course, I'm going to have to modify this because the initial velocity of the capital M block is zero. That would be our second object. And V1I is being called VI, so I would write VI plus V1F equals V2F. Okay, now I need to use this equation and plug it in to my momentum equation. We want to find the velocity of the capital M box, which is V2F. So what I'm going to try and do is eliminate V1F by substituting something inside of it. So I would write V1F equals V2F minus VI, and then plug that in. So this is going to give me little m times V2F minus VI plus capital M times V2F is equal to little m times vi. Now I redistribute the m, little m v2f minus little m vi plus capital M v2f 
equals little m vi. I'm going to add little m vi to both sides. Equals little m v2f plus capital M v2f. And now I can factor out v2f. And I can solve for v2f. I'll do this over here by taking 2 little m times vi and dividing it by little m plus capital M. This might be a multiple choice question or perhaps a free response question. Um, and if the m's were ma and mb, then you would have probably an easier time seeing the difference. But this is our little m, and then this is our capital M. Congratulations. This is how you use the elastic shortcut. Thanks, and bye-bye.